To download a full printable PDF version of this pattern, click the link on the screen now, in the description below, or by visiting clubcrochet.com slash turkey leg. Hey there, I'm Louie, and in this video, we'll be making this little tiny turkey leg. I thought it would be perfect for uh, maybe a necklace, a keychain, um, it could be cute little uh, um, like gifts for Thanksgiving to put on the plate for Thanksgiving or something. Um, yeah, you could use it for pretty much anything. I was thinking about making a really tiny one to go along with my s tiny stakes uh, as tiny earrings for um, some friends of mine by making it with um, thread instead of cotton, worsted weight cotton yarn. Speaking of which, the materials that you'll need for this pattern are some worsted weight cotton yarn in brown and white, or um, you could probably use an off-white as well. You'll need a size G crochet hook, a pair of scissors, of course, some stuffing. You don't need very much. In fact, this is probably already too much. You'll need about like that much. Um, so you could probably even just pull it out of an old pillow. And a darning needle, like so. All right, let's get hooking. All right, so to start, we'll be working with our brown yarn here. And you can either use the chain two method or the magic loop method. I'm going to go ahead and use the magic loop method, although I normally don't, because uh, I don't know. Sometimes you just want to change it up. For round one, we'll be single crocheting six into the second chain from the hook or into the magic loop. So work six single crochets into the magic loop. If you need to learn how to do the magic loop, there should be a link in the description or on the video right now. Uh, and I made a whole series to teach a bunch of different parts, including how to do the magic loop. So I'm going to go ahead and close my magic loop now. All right. But as I said, you can easily use the chain two method there as well. So for round two, we're going to be working an increase into each stitch around. So we find our first stitch. This pattern is worked in the round, meaning you don't have to turn around for the entire thing. And an increase is just working two single crochets into that one stitch. So right there, one and two. And we'll just keep doing that increase into each stitch all the way around. There should be six increases total. And this is going to bring us up from six stitches around up to 12 stitches around. Get some extra yarn there. And I'm just gonna let this tail go kind of long. I guess I can just, I've worked around the tail a few times. So actually, yeah, let's just, let's just go ahead and cut the tail, get us out of the way. All right, one more right here. And so now you should have 12 stitches around. For our next two rounds, rounds three and four, we'll be working a single crochet into each stitch all the way around, just one single crochet into each stitch. And that's for two rounds. So for two rounds, just single crochet into each stitch around. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so that will be the end of round four. For round five, we'll be decreasing. So for the first two stitches, we just work a regular old single crochet, one and two. For the third stitch, third and fourth, I suppose, we'll be doing an invisible decrease. So if you don't know how to do invisible decrease, you get your crochet hook and work into just the front loops. Just make sure it's the front loops of the next two stitches. I kind of work around like that. See, so I'm kind of into the two front loops there. And you wanna work a single crochet into those two front loops. And that's called an invisible decrease. So we're going to repeat that three times total. Two single crochets and then another invisible decrease. So let's do two single crochets and do it again. One, two and then another invisible decrease. We work into the front loops. Oop, right, right, 
that. I like to get my nail to help me out there. And then work in invisible decrease. Okay, and then one more time, two single crochets, and then invisible decrease. And this should bring you um, from 12 stitches around to nine stitches around. There we go. Okay. And that'll be the end of round five. So for round six, we're just going to be working a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. There should be nine stitches total. Pretty, pretty simple. Also, if you like this video, take this uh, moment to please like the video down below. Um, share it with any friends or in any crochet groups that you really like. Uh, it really helps out the channel. And also, if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. And uh, if you hit that little bell uh, down below, you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. All right, just a couple more stitches here. All right, so that'll be the end of round six. For round seven, we want to decrease uh, one more time. So for that, we single crochet one in the first stitch. And then do an invisible decrease in the next. Again, remember that invisible decrease is work into the front loops. Like that. And then you work a single crochet. And then you repeat that three times total. This is going to bring us from nine stitches down to six stitches. And you can kind of see uh, when it gets this small and you can't get your finger in there, uh, I kind of just pinch it to get a better grip on it. So again, that's one single crochet and then an invisible decrease. Like that. Three times total to go from nine stitches down to six stitches. And we're already almost done with our, our meat. Okay, and that should bring us down to six stitches around. Okay, so for our last round for the meat, we're only going to be working into the front loops, meaning the loops closest to us and we're going to work a single crochet into each stitch around. So first let's get into that front loop. Okay, so into that front loop. And we wanna just work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. There should be six stitches total. Pretty easy, and this is gonna be kind of the weird, um, the weird flap that goes over the the bone, which I, I'm just realizing that doesn't really make any sense, but you'll you'll get it soon enough. Just a few more. You can see when it gets like really small like this, you need to use your nail to kind of help you get into that stitch. Is that the last one? That was the last one. Okay. So to finish this up, we will work into both loops of the first stitch that we made in that last round. And you want to work a slip stitch into that. Okay, just one slip stitch. We can cut the yarn. You don't need it too long. That's probably long enough right there. And just pull it all the way through. Thread it on a darning needle. And then we want to do a hidden end. So how to make a hidden end is you work into the back loop of the next stitch right here, right there. Go around and then go back down through where that, where that yarn comes out. See, you want to go back straight through the middle and then we kind of just feel our way so that we're into as many stitches as we can on our way down. And then I'm just going to go out the side like this and pull it not too tight, but tight enough. And this just kind of makes a hidden end so you can't really see where the end, where the, the stitches begin and end there. All right.
So you can cut this if you want. Uh, if you're going to sew this onto a keychain or something, leave it uncut and sew it onto the keychain with that. But now we can work on our uh, on the bone that will go into the the meat. All right. This video is brought to you by Club Crochet, a club made specifically for hookers. It offers new weekly patterns and projects, including full video tutorials, monthly kits with all the materials needed mailed directly to your door, classes and groups made to learn new techniques and make new friends, and more. Plans start at only $5 a month. Get hooked at clubcrochet.com. All right, so now we want to use our white yarn here. And you want a somewhat long end. I suppose, like, that's probably long enough. And you want to make a slip knot and chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, now for this next round, we want to only work into the back loops of our chains. So if you look at our chains, you can see there is a top loop right there and a bottom loop right there on the bottom. And then if you turn it around, there's also a back loop on the back. So we want to start in our second chain from the hook. I'm going to get into that back loop. Get the hook in there. And you want to work a single crochet into that back loop. Yeah, just a simple single crochet. And a slip stitch into that same back loop. So get your hook back into there. Work a slip stitch. Okay, now you want to chain two, one and two, pull it kind of tight, and then single crochet into that same back loop one more time. Okay, and that's going to make like a little, the end of the bone. And now into the next four stick uh, chains, rather, into the next four chains, working into those back loops, you want to make a slip stitch into each chain all the way till you get to the bottom. One, two. There should be four slip stitches total. Okay. Now to finish up the bone, you just want to cut the yarn and simply just pull it all the way through. Okay. Now let's grab the meat. We want to stuff it a little bit, so this is where we get our stuffing. I like using a uh, pencil for this part. And you kind of just need to like work your way in and stuff it. You don't need it too full because it's such a small piece. But yeah, let's, we can add a little bit more stuffing than that. Let's, let's fill it up. Make it really dense. A good meal. <laughs> All right. So now to finish up our uh, turkey leg and to add our um, our bone into the meat, you thread each end of our white yarn with a needle, and you want to. You can kind of only feel it, but. You want to work this white yarn into the back loops. Remember how you only worked in the front loops for this last round? Well, you want to work this into the back loops. So the way I do that is I kind of go towards the end and then pull it away. And now I just got into that back loop of one of them. And then I bring it out through pretty much anywhere on the side of the meat. And you want to thread the other end and do the same on the opposite side. So you can kind of see that's on that side. You want to go to this side. This is where having a hooked darning needle is really useful. Come out through the same one that you came out for the first half. Pull them both pretty tight. And you want to double knot it. Okay, now we can just cut all the ends. Uh, cut them pretty close. And 
and we'll just stuff them back in using the other end of our needle. Just kind of need to stuff that back in and squish it so that it's really hidden. And that will be how to crochet a little turkey leg. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, consider becoming a Club Crochet member. Uh, you get patterns and projects every single month with full video tutorials just like this. You get early access to my videos here on YouTube. Um, this month's patterns are for a little turkey, like that. So, you know, post cooking. Um, a little steak, which was up a week ago on my YouTube channel here. And I don't know where he is. I might have dropped him, but there's a little chef somewhere here. Here's his hat. Oh, here he is. There we go. A little chef. So check that out at clubcrochet.com. You can create an account for free, uh, and memberships start at $5 a month. Um, yeah, but with free accounts, you get PDF versions of all these and early access to my patterns. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, make sure to cook these at 350 for three and a half hours or more um, <laughs> and serve it with gravy. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. Pasta la pizza and happy hooker.